Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna be placing these Vendacious type orchids in baskets. I just received them. I made a haul recently. If you missed it, check out the info card here or the description below. And I do think that Vendacious orchids for me do better in baskets, better rooted, watered frequently than potted. So I will unpot these guys today, place them in baskets and let's start with this one. Now this orchid is a pretty famous one. This is a Rhynchostilis gigantea spots. Usually this orchid is grown in a basket with a sort of a medium like coconut fiber. I will keep it bare rooted, but I have to say I really don't like the state of this mix. I just don't think they do so well potted for me. So I'm gonna squeeze gently and reveal the root system. Yeah, this medium looks pretty old. And the roots, well, they don't look as bad as I imagined actually. But this orchid can definitely do much, much better than this. So I'll try to remove the medium as much as possible. Whatever does not want to come out, I will just remove after I soak the root system with water. So this is the best that I can do. I will go to the sink, wet everything and remove whatever pieces I have left. And here is the orchid after cleanup. All of these roots are actually viable. They're stiff, so I will just leave them on. Now, this orchid sadly suffered a loss on transport. This leaf right here was just ripped and I was thinking to let it be, but as you can see, most of it is ripped. It's only hanging on by a thread, so I will actually remove this leaf. The next thing I'll do is just spray hydrogen peroxide 3% on the cut wound and on the roots as well. You never know when you run into snails. And I had such a hard time in the past with snails, I really don't want to go through it again. And with any cut wound or rip, I just like to sterilize it and disinfect it with hydrogen peroxide. And so far it's been working well for me. So I will be using a plastic basket for this orchid. This type of basket uh, is called a number four. You can find it in online nurseries, even in garden centers. It's not the typical Vanda basket, but it's what I have and it's gonna do the job perfectly. This orchid does not have an extensive root system and she's really not very stable. When she will grow roots, she will be more stable, but for now I think it is advisable to stabilize it. So I thought a little bit about how to stabilize this orchid in her basket. It's pretty impossible to make it 100% stable, but at least I don't want it to fall out of the basket. So I'm using raffia tape around a few roots and the two threads are coming out from the bottom, as you can see, where I will tie a knot. The orchid is wobbly, yes, I will try to not move it too much, but at least it's not gonna fall from my basket. Maybe a rhizome clip would have worked as well, I personally don't like them, but it's an option if you're okay with them. If I would have placed medium, this orchid would have been more stable, yes, but I do not wish to have medium with my Vanda orchids, so for me this is the best option. But if you're ever in this situation, of course you can be creative. So what I'm gonna do now is create a knot at the bottom. And luckily one of the roots helps me a little bit. If I feed it through one of the eyes, it's gonna keep my orchid slightly more stable. So until this orchid creates new roots, I need to be careful with it. But everything is very ventilated, very aerated, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so this next one is a proper Vanda. It's a hybrid between the Denisoniana and Tricolor. She should be really lovely when she blooms. Same story like the other one. I'm just gonna remove the potting medium. I'm gonna clean up the roots and try to pot it in a basket. Okay, this orchid requires a little bit more work because I have some dead roots here. So, I have a pair of pruners that is sterilizing in alcohol for the past half an hour. I'm going to flame it over the sink and I'll come back when I'm ready to cut. So the dead roots are pretty obvious in my opinion on Vanda orchids, especially after you soak the root system you can see that some of the roots are green. This is because they're wet and they're alive and functioning. However, other roots are pretty brown and they look desiccated if you press on them. They're just very papery. These are the dead roots. These are the ones that I want to cut away. Now, some roots have dead sections. These roots, I'm only gonna keep the green part and I'll throw away the dead part. So I just like to pull on the dead root, see where it sprouts and cut it as close to the base as possible. So this is my Vanda orchid after trimming the dead roots. As you can see, she's really not looking that bad. I just had a few dead roots. As I was saying, I tend to believe Vanda orchids do much better bare rooted. This Vanda was potted and the bottom roots were not looking great. They were actually dead. So I just feel more comfortable knowing it's bare rooted and if I need to water it every day or soak it overnight even, I just prefer Vanda orchids to have beautiful roots. So again, like with the other orchid, I'm gonna use hydrogen peroxide 3% 
just to sterilize the root system. I don't know if I have snails on this orchid. I don't want to take chances. Okay, so because this orchid has quite a lot more roots than the other one, I'm hoping that I will not need to stabilize it. I will try to feed the roots through the eyes of the basket and let's hope it's stable. Okay, so after a few attempts, I convinced my Vanda to stay. She's okay. When she grows roots, she's gonna be more stable. She's actually pretty stable already. Okay, next we need to hang these baskets somehow. So I'll tell you what I thought about. And this is the end result. I have to tell you, I first tried with some floral wire. You know, the silvery one looks prettier, but I'm really not good at DIY. It really wasn't pretty, you guys. So I just used these normal plastic hangers that you can find in uh, garden centers. And this is the solution for craft talent impaired people such as myself, but it will have to do. Not as pretty but it will get the job done. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. In the following days, I do have to perform a lot of repottings. Hope you will enjoy them. I'm curious to see the new orchids, the root system, how they look like and so on. So let me know down below if you're up for some repottings this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe for daily orchid and plant videos and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Okay, so funny thing, you remember this guy suffered on transport, I watered him and the old growth plumped back up, this plumped back up and some flower buds are fat. He wants to bloom. What do I do? <laughs> do I let him bloom or do I just start to induce dormancy? I think I'm just gonna let him do his thing.